This is an official download. We've got a great show lined up for you. From the custardtv.com. On to the internet you go. Hello and welcome to the Custard TV podcast. The fact you're hearing my voice will have already let you know that Luke isn't here. Um, he's currently regenerating and will probably be replaced by a woman in due course. Um, but it's joining about me, time. But joining me, you've just heard his voice, is uh, yep. the ever-present uh, Gary, who's uh, uh, just recovered from uh, a bad uh, voice thing. Well, it was, it was actually laryngitis. And I laryngitis? lost my voice. Uh, hmm. friend, friends and family were more than happy. Uh, because I wasn't allowed to say anything, so uh, and that, that's hence why this podcast is about yeah. it's about a week late because um, well, basically it should have been you on your own, really. I mean, that probably would have been the, the better podcast yeah. for people to listen to, Matt. Yeah, yeah, the, um, the one man show coming to Edinburgh man... in about a month. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are going to Edinburgh, aren't you? I am on my own, so it will be a one man show. See, there you are. We'll get you a show at the Fringe, don't worry. Gary and Matt. This could be a podcast. A podcast? Don't you have to be some sort of whiz kid to do those? Uh, definitely not. Anyone with a computer can make one. Talking telly. Use your ears and trust them. This is the Custard TV Podcast. Yes, that would entertain me briefly. From thecustardtv.com. Okay, sorry. Reviews previews and uh, Gary Goes West at some point I think we're going that or Gary Goes West or yeah. us oh I like it I like it we we used that last year but we'll recycle oh, did we? oh, okay. we're, we're well, a green they've, podcast they've, they've, they've found to be new listeners don't worry about it <laughs> um, so uh, there's two big bits of news but I firstly just wanted to mention uh, or congratulate Daisy and Charlie Cooper for the fact that uh, the BBC have renewed this country for a second series. This was one of mine and Luke's favourites. Luke, uh, Gary, you didn't watch this, did you? No, I missed this. I, I, yeah. uh, as it's now I got it's a second series, perhaps I shall be dutifully mm, catching up somewhere. Probably still bobbing around the iPlayer somewhere. Uh, this is yeah. a documentary that um, was really funny, and uh, Daisy and Charlie, re- both really nice, the siblings who write the show so and star in it. Uh, so that's good. Even as though brother and sister, surely one of them will be being paid more than the other. Ah, nice. There's your link. So, There's your link. Um, well, we, sh- we, we should be really revealing our salaries on this, uh, but that won't take long. Um, yeah, it's a paid. big fat zero. <laughs> oh, no, no, Luke does get us a £10 Amazon voucher every Christmas. Oh, that's true. Sorry, yes, yeah, £10 yeah, Amazon yeah. voucher. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do, I, do I have to declare that for tax reasons? Or? <laughs> I'll, I'll call um, Chris Evans' uh, accountant. He must have yeah. a few So, bucks. yeah, Chris Evans is the top paid uh, personality on Ah, no. List. It's breaking news. It's breaking revealed news. today that it's not him, it's Graham Norton. Oh, yeah. Graham but, Norton. No, that's Graham Norton of his. is three million. Uh, the question I had, and, my, and this was um, something a colleague put to me when I was reading this list and we were talking about it. Um, mm-hmm. Is there any star who would convince you to watch a show or would you watch it regardless in, in so much as is the, are these pay... Um, I I couldn't justified. give a monkey's what the mm. people on the BBC earn. I put this on Twitter and I got yeah, a fair I few retweets. And and the honest answer is is that I've always been and because I used to work in the area of recruitment, you know, where salaries were, you know, very much discussed and debated and talked about, you know, not only in us in the office but with everyone we recruited. My opinion is if you want to negotiate your salary, the best way to do it is to talk about what you do, not what someone else gets. So I kind of personally feel like, yes, I can see that there's a gender equality, Mm. inequality, sorry, I agree with Mm. that, but I don't care if Gary Lineker earns more than Matt Baker, and that he's only on one time a week and Matt Baker's on six. It doesn't bother me. No. But I mean, would you watch Match of the Day regardless of who presented it? Yeah. Um, Yeah, yeah, because I want to watch the Premiership. I think I enjoy it more because of Gary Lineker, because he's a quality presenter. Mm. But I would still watch it. I think maybe if it, let's say, I don't know, well, I don't know what else you could say. Because I mean, I'd watch it because the football. But I mean, you yeah. only watch a drama because you like it, not because of. Certain, we've no. always watched dramas because we like them. Sometimes, whether good people or bad people are in them. I, have you seen it? Have you seen this full list that's been bobbing around? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've read have various you seen who the, during the week and seen who the highest paid actor is working for the BBC? It's the guy, a casualty, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But then Derek again, he's been in it for that, that make, kind of makes sense. He's yeah. been in it for thirty years. Mm. He gets pay, he gets more about... than Ian Beale though. <sighs> he's not got a good enough agent then. No, I know Ian Beale's only on two hundred k to two hundred forty nine k. Same my, as um, my heart bleeds. Danny Dyer. I know. Uh... 
But I'm not sort of comparing the salaries. What I'm saying is, you know, Gary no. Lineker is on 1.75 to 1.8 million, but you're saying if it was someone else, you would still watch, even if yeah. it was just the football highlights and no one, no one doing it. Well, I mean, you know, if, even if Piers Morgan was presenting them, I'd yeah. probably record it and cut Piers Morgan out, you know. Mm. Um, you can do that. Uh, it's only you could do that in real life. Um, no, I, I, yeah, but obviously the main thing that's come out of it is the gender inequality and, and also uh, the racial inequality, really, and as well. The, you know. And um, uh, article I was reading today, uh, class inequality as well. Um, oh. Yeah, but then again, yeah. it's the BBC. There's always been a class yeah. war thing. Doctor yep. Who! There was some Doctor Who news last week, Gary. Did you did you see this? Did you hear no, about I, it? No, I, I haven't spotted this at all. No. No. Can I just no. talk about the fact of how badly this was presented? I don't know whether you actually watched it live. I forgot it was on. I got a tweet from uh, Mo Walker saying he'd he'd uh, like us our opinions on thirteen. Oh on yeah, number thirteen. And then I I watched the video. I was like, oh yeah, they were announcing it today. So I completely. So, so basically, they said that they said that they would announce it once the tennis was finished. Now this is stupid because a nobody knows how long the tennis was going to be on for. Because, of course, tennis matches can last either three sets or five sets, the men's game. And therefore, everybody was watching the tennis, waiting, all the Who fans are watching the tennis, and they dragged it out. So at the end, instead of like going straight to the announcement, they saw Roger Federer going around saying hello to his wife, his kids, his cleaner, his doctor, his whatever. And then they deleted it. And then Sue Barker just turned around and said, oh, and, and now a big announcement. And, and then this kind of very strange thing that the BBC decided to do where they showed somebody in a big long coat, so you couldn't really tell who it was, pick up a key, and then pull the hood off to reveal Jodie Whittaker. Mm. Uh, a blonde Jodie Whittaker as well, which mm. confused a few people, because she wasn't blonde in... Um, in, um, in uh, I was going to say breakdance there, but uh, Broadchurch is probably better. <laughs> um, yeah, and it was all very bizarre, and then the internet exploded. Mm. Uh, uh, I with mean, uh, that, misogynist comments. It's been a week now, so I mean, every, a lot of it has already been said, and it, uh, I think the main thing is that it was Chris Chibnall who, when he got yeah. the gig, said, "I want a woman." It's not the BBC going, "Oh, we need you know PC and all no. this nonsense." It was Chris Chibnall's idea. I'm sure if he came up with a really crazy idea, the BBC would veto it. But in this case, he wanted a woman, and he he auditioned several people, and Jodie Whittaker was the one that he picked. That's I mean, how I TV put, works. Yeah, I mean, I put on Twitter afterwards, and I still feel that way. It makes sense with Chris Chibnall mm. to go for an actor or actress that he knows well in his first year. If he's getting the chance to say, right, you're getting a new doctor, probably a new assistant. We've got no news about that yet. But it makes sense for him to go with someone he knows. And Jodie Whittaker is a really good actress. Yeah. I you know, would I say think, that... Sorry, go on. I was going to say, I think, I think we were all dreading Chris Marshall, mm. and we dodged that Definitely. bullet. So, although, although, have you heard the rumours that he might be the assistant? And that's fine. I think that's perfectly fine. But mm. I don't see him as Doctor Who material. You'd prefer him as the assistant than... I, the, he'd actually make quite a good assistant now. I think so, about. yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I would say Jodie Whittaker is an odd one for me simply because I've never seen her sort of play anything other than the straight man, if that makes sense. She's yeah, I know what you mean. Always, always very like in Broadchurch, she was just basically crying for three series. Yep. Um Attack the Block, which is a, a, something a lot of people have bought up. I don't know if you've seen that. The film Attack I the haven't. Block. That's the Channel Four was on by Channel Four Productions. Well, it's believe, Film it? Four, isn't it? And directed yeah, by uh, Joe it. Cornish from Adam and Joe. Yep. Um, and it's like aliens attack a blo- uh, tower block in London. Uh, she plays this like young nurse, and she's like the straight man who's like, right, we'll go, you know formulates the plan, basically. I've never seen her sort of do the zaniness, the craziness that you see no. from a lot of Doctor Who's. I think, if anything, she'll be sort of closer in tone to um, Christopher Eccleston of the most recent yes. Doctors. Um, yes, I, I would agree with that. Possibly with a touch of the David Tennant. Mm. But then again, that's more the kind of Chris Chibnall link that I'm thinking of, you know, the way yeah. he writes and, and things. I mean, I think, you know, the one thing is, is that there's going to be a lot of eyes on the product. Mm. You know, uh, you know, they, they certainly if, if the BBC were worried about Doctor Who becoming stale and, un, you know, sort of not relevant, they've certainly changed that. Um, I think it'll be fine. Apparently, one of the reasons that they went for her was apparently she's played some very strong characters on the stage. 
Mm. Um, apparently, not seen these myself. Again, this is not a stage podcast, uh, so I don't really know. But apparently, that's one of the reasons that he went for it. And apparently, Shield was the best auditionee, mm. which again, uh, how television works. That's, that's, that's what I just said. That that, um, that that we should get that on t-shirts for uh, for print. That, that's how that's TV, how TV works. works. I didn't see her name come up in too many of the um, sorry, the Jodie, Jodie Whittaker's name no. come in too much of the online betting. No. Certainly not in the top ten that I kind of paid attention no. to. So. But no, well done for keeping it quiet, BBC. Yeah, because yeah, she, she said she knew for months and months, like three months, I think she said, mm. and she'd only told her husband. Uh, so and, and actually, she will be playing a doctor in a BBC series coming soon called Trust Me. I think that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah, so. I've seen some uh, previews for that. So, yeah, so I, I think we're, we're excited, a little trepidatious. And um, I think it is going to get a lot of new eyes on Doctor Who. I think yeah. the, to see I'm, what you know what she'll be like because there is a but at the same time there is a pressure on her which which I absolutely. Hope she but I think that it. pressure would have been on any actor, mm. uh, but she'll get more of it. Gary, yes, can you go west for me? Yep, certainly. Two reviews, uh, as Matt alluded to earlier, the, uh, the, the behemoth that is Game of Thrones returned this week, uh, once again uh, broke the internet with its uh, downloads and uh, previews, and this is the seventh series, and this is the first of the last two series, which will be a lot shorter. There's only seven episodes in this series, and they're is probably only seven or six. eight? I think it's seven in seven, and then six in eight, I think. You've got three major prot- plot lines, and one that will sort of tease in, or two little ones that will tease in. The first and major a, plot line is... And a notorious is, uh, cameo that I think we should bring up as well. Well, definitely, yeah, we'll, we'll get on to that. Uh, firstly, up in the north, you have John and Sansa, or John Snow and Sansa Stark, along with all the wildlings and the, uh, the lords from the north. They're all kind of still arguing about the fact that the White Walkers are coming down south. They're getting closer and closer to the wall. Uh, Bran has arrived at the wall, uh, but all the northern lords are at Winterfell, uh, and they're all kind of talking about how they're going to deal uh, with, uh, with the White Walkers coming, how they're going to have to train children and, and women in order to fight because mm. they don't have the numbers. And towards the end of the episode, it's revealed that they need this uh, mythical article called Dragonglass, which mm. is the only thing that can kill White well, Walkers. Well, he says that early on, doesn't he? He says, yes. he says John says it in that scene where they're all in the, in the hall. Yeah, um, it's actually run. been... Re- the yeah. strange thing is, is that one of the things that which they've not done particularly well in the series, Stannis, who was one of the major characters who got mm. killed off a couple of years ago, told John and Sam that there was mm. loads of dragon glass at, uh, at Dragonstone, Dragonstone, but that's been kind of forgotten. So. But no, he did mention it. Sam mentioned it in this episode. He did yeah, say but Stannis think... told me that, that there was dragon glass at uh, Dragonstone. He said yeah. that exact thing. It just happens to be a bit clunky because it's like, mm. well, then why didn't they? There go is and get a it lot then? of clunk. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, of uh, here. and I think that's because there's this whole sort of idea that these are the big action series episodes, and therefore mm. plot. There is wasn't not a lot of there wasn't a lot of action here though. It was just a lot of talking. Um, uh, one thing as well with that John thing is that he, there's some tension between he and Sam. Yes. and she's got a bit sort of evil now. You know, she's she's sort of been influenced by. Sort of Ramsey and Cersei and people she's been yeah. around. You know she's been she's around. She's damaged a bit, isn't she, more yeah, now? So, so she's quite and, twisted. So and there's little fingers sniffing around as well. I love Aidan Gillen's smirk. I think he can smirk yeah. better than anyone in the business. Yeah, he almost doesn't need to say anything for ages. No. So he, he can just sort of influence things by that. As we move a little bit further down south, as we mentioned, first off you had um, Arya Stark. Who, uh, uh, Aya, 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 or Arya. Well, I never know because it gets it's Aya. Really Everyone says Aya. Aya. Yeah. All right. I'll say Aya then. Yeah. At the end of the last series, she killed Walder Frey, who was mm. the uh, Lord of the Twins and David where the Bradley Red Wedding again. took place. Yeah, David Bradley again. Uh, and she, as a face changer, or a, 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 a... What's it called? Go with face changer. Face changer, because <laughs> I can't remember the name of the thing. Uh, and she basically organises a feast and uh, spikes the wine and kills off all the rest of the male Frey, so all of his heirs. Mm. Uh, allegedly have been killed. Again, a lot of people pulling hole, put in, pull in holes in this because A, we don't quite know how the face-changing thing works because she's not as tall as he was, yet she looks exactly like him. Um, but they like, and the idea was is that she came out and she gave a very knowing smirk as well. You know, her revenge for the fact the Red Wedding killed her brother and her mother 
Uh, I just like to praise David Bradley for sort of doing a convincing performance that he was Aya being Walder. If yeah, that makes sense. but I it wasn't that was, him. But it yeah. was him. Yeah. Yes, I, I very hard.